It is my esteemed pleasure to stand here this morning as Chief Fire Officer of the St. Joseph Fire Service to welcome you to the Enhancing the Resilience of the St. Joseph Fire Service Project Launch and Workshop, a project which I can tell you is very dear to the team of the St. Joseph Fire Service and one for which we are very thankful and which we are of the view that could not have come at a more opportune time. This occasion marks a significant milestone in the symbiotic relationship between the Caribbean Development Bank and the government of St. Lucia, with the people of St. Lucia being the ultimate beneficiaries through the St. Lucia Fire Service. A few weeks ago, I attended the Caribbean Association of Fire Chief Conference in Puerto Rico, and there was a common tune synonymous with Calypso across the region as it relates to the issues that impede our efficiency. The main issues being the lack of practical training facilities, the challenges relating to the extinguishing of fires involving hybrid and electrical vehicles, an aging fleet of appliances across the Caribbean, and the psychological impact on firefighters responding to higher incidents of violent crime. The level of contentment and comfort that the Central Fire Service feels with the project component cannot be overstated. We can, tick, uh, we, we can tick off a number of boxes of our needs being met under this project, and we look forward to reaping the benefits in the not too distant future. I wish to place on the record that in the 43 years plus service which I have served this esteemed institution, this project represents the single most significant so far as government support for the Central Fire Service. The synergy is clear. The work that we do at the St. Joseph Fire Service is people-centered and is keeping with the government of St. Joseph's agenda of putting people first. The project represents one, of, one more example of the government commitment to the people of St. Lucia. I wish to pause here a moment to tell the Honorable Minister that whilst we are grateful for this unprecedented investment, the Prime Minister's developmental agenda outlined in his 2024-2025 budget address provides new and emerging challenges for the fire department. We can therefore expect to see some new requests to ensure that the Central Fire Service is well placed to respond to these challenges. So <laughs> I, I want to tell the, the Minister there may be a, a component of refinancing very soon. <laughs> The St. Joseph Fire Service extends its thanks to the Honorable Prime Minister, Philip J. Pierre, for his unreverent commitment and support, his recognition of the critical role that we play in the overall social and economic development of St. Lucia, and the impact in preserving the national security of our country. Let me once again extend a warm welcome to the CDB team, who saw value in our proposal and who have established a beneficial working relationship with us. The project team from St. Lucia Fire Service, the Ministry of Home Affairs, Crime Prevention and Persons with Disabilities, our partners in development and all other stakeholders. I am grateful for your hard work in ensuring that this day become a reality. It is indeed a pleasure for all of us to be here to witness and be part in this historic moment. Thank you and welcome. Today marks a momentous occasion as we launch the Enhancing the Resilience of St. Lucia's Fire Service Project. And this initiative couldn't be more timely. And I heard in the remarks, the welcome remarks of the fire chief, that we may be, <clears throat> we might soon be receiving um, a proposal from them for refinancing. I want to tell the fire chief that this project is timely. We knew that this year was going to be the year of infrastructure, and we ensured that the project was aligned with the year of infrastructure, so you have no need to request more money during the course of this financial year. This project was significant weight for our government, for the people of St. Lucia, 
for the St. Lucia Fire Service and also for the Ministry of Home Affairs, Crime Prevention and Persons with Disabilities. And although I recently assumed the role of Minister with Responsibility for Home Affairs, I've witnessed firsthand even before um, assuming my, that post, the tireless efforts of the Permanent Secretary and her team to improve the fire service conditions. I want to extend my gratitude to the Caribbean Development Bank for their crucial support. This, I believe, is just the beginning of a fruitful partnership or the continuation of a partnership. We envision collaborating on similar initiatives to strengthen the protective services across the island. So I want to consider this as a seed being planted with the potential to blossom into a robust system that can serve us all. And while the project, while the specifics of the projects, um, or I would say, means the fire chief would have said during his 33 years, he has never seen a project of that size. Um, I, want, I think that there are certain aspects of that project that deserves a certain level of emphasis. The acquisition of four new ambulances, four domestic fire trucks, and aircraft firefighting appliance. That's a significant step forward. I don't know when the last fire chief you heard so many things being mentioned in one speech. So, also equally important, I know it's important to provide equipment to the fire service, but equally important is the rehabilitation of the training facility. And I think this training facility has trained countless firemen, and undeniably it requires a certain level of modernization. And this project would ensure that the facility receives the necessary upgrade and the necessary love. And the construction of a practical training ground near the school will also provide invaluable opportunities for firefighters to hone their skills. This project is a significant undertaking, and that's why we're here today. Fire Chief, I know you know the amount. I think over $27 million. Yeah, a nod of approval. Over $27 million invested over three years. This requires a clear and shared understanding of all stakeholders who are involved. And today, this workshop is a chance for you to ask questions and ensure that everyone is on the same page. For this project to be successful, all of us need to sing from the same hymn book. And as Minister of Home Affairs, I want to assure the CDB that we are fully committed. The Building Resilience in St. Lucia Fire Service project is vital and we share your vision. This project is indeed a dream come true. A dream that has been, that have been anticipated for a very, very long time from the fire service. We know the struggles that the fire service have to endure. We've heard it over and over um, at times. Um, I think they've even gone almost to take strike action because of some conditions that they've had to endure. And we're happy that today, um, once and for all, we can bring an end to the situation. But dreams don't materialize on their own. And I want to give a round of applause to the working group, the steering committee, the project team. Those individuals are the unseen heroes behind this launch. Sometimes we come in here as ministers and our face, we, we become the face of a project. But the harsh reality is those individuals who really put in the work, who really put in the effort, those unseen heroes, they usually stay in the background. They've tirelessly dedicated themselves since the beginning, organizing meetings, securing approvals, overseeing designs, and much more. And their passion for St. Lucia's development not personal gain, is what drives their efforts. So we're ready for liftoff. We're ready for liftoff. This is the only time, I think that's the only time I'll be permitted to say to the fire service, let's catch this project ablaze. That's the only thing that we're going to catch ablaze. So let's create a legacy of fire safety so bright that it cannot be ignored. This project coincides with your 50th anniversary, a time for celebration. This initiative ensures a future-proof fire service, one with top-notch facilities and equipment for generations to come. The quality service you provide won't be hindered by outdated resources. So with that, I say let's maximize this workshop by learning and sharing. Thank you again to the CDB for partnering with us on this critical project. Gratitude also goes to the stakeholders involved and finally to the St. Lucia Fire Service for your patience in seeing this long-awaited project come to life. We say thank you.
about a year ago, well, a little under a year ago, when the Lahaina fire started in Maui, my mind immediately went to the possibility of disasters, catastrophes related to fires in, in our region. And I thought, are we prepared? And I had a little check this morning to see how the Maui folks are doing. And I just, uh, I, I just read that in February of this year, the U.S. authorities continue to declare a public health emergency around the aftermath of those fires. So we're not talking about something that's insignificant. Um, we're talking about an area of, of work related to fire prevention and the aftermath that can have long-lasting negative effects. And it's important that in implementing a project like this one, and by the way, congratulations, because it is the first, first project of this nature that we're doing in any CDB member country. So I think St. Lucia is setting a trend here. And an important one, because I also want to mention, last week, um, a number of us were at the SIDS 4 conference in Antigua. And while a lot of the conversation was around the vulnerabilities of small island developing states and the impact of climate change, the, the consequences of what is happening with global warming and the impact of that on the region will eventually manifest itself in, in more fires. And I think we're seeing that. We're seeing that in your data. Um, given that between 2018 and 2022, Response fire responses moved from an average of 579 in 2018 to something like 730 in 2022. So not only are you having to respond to more requests for help during, during fires, in terms of emergency responses, first responders are responding to, on average, in 2019, something like 8,300 um, medical emergencies. In 2019, that number jumped to almost 15,000 in 2022. So, first responders, the fire services, the ambulance services, emergency responders to requests from your citizens are growing at an exponential rate, which suggests that the work that you're doing here is going to help not just help you respond quicker. Because we also know from data done in other places like Quebec that one of the most important aspects of how, how the community can recover from an emergency is how quickly the responders can respond. Um, and that, that doesn't just relate to property uh, damage, but that also relates, of course, more importantly, to what happens to, to the human assets. So, it's really important work what you're doing here. So let me just emphasize, not just the innovation of this project, focusing on, as was mentioned earlier, new equipment, new ambulances, new equipment for the fire service, but importantly on the capacity building aspects of, of, of this project. It's not just about having new equipment, it's also making sure that everyone working with fire services and in your emergency services are well prepared to respond to your citizens' demands. By the way, um, what is also encouraging is, and back to the symbiotic nature of our relationship, this, this project is in line with not just the bank's objectives of resilience across the membership, but also in trying to meet all of the sustainable development goals to which St. Lucia is also pursuing very actively. Um, one important aspect of, of this work also has to do with putting in place for the fire services agenda policy and action plan so that in, in reviewing how you're responding to those crises, that the way women and children are treated in the response mechanism, that those get built into your policies. Um, I know most governments in this region have the view that, of course, everything we do um, is going to impact women and, and, and men equally. But we know from data that that doesn't happen unless our governments have intentional plans. So I want to 
really congratulate you on, on, on having that aspect of the work incorporated in how this project will be implemented. Uh, not just training your own human resources, but also I think there is always a significant effect in the community that, all right, our government is really looking out for all groups in society, vulnerable groups as well as those who are not vulnerable. Another important aspect of this project too, I think, is when you think about in a crisis, what happens, and that the mental health, not just of the workers, but also the community involved when there is a crisis, when there is an emergency, how it affects the community. I think paying attention to the mental health of your staff as well as of the community is very important. And I think this is something I would like to really highlight and congratulate you for. Um, I also want to say that it's in moments like these where the CBD gets to learn how to improve not just implementation, but how how do we how do we tweak our projects in a way that we're it really is looking after the development outcomes, which we expect to be felt by every citizen in St. Lucia. So it's not just about the fire service. The fire service is the vehicle through which um, any emergency response related to fires or any other type of emergency that could happen in St. Lucia, that these be dealt with in a way that really uh, makes the outcomes as positive as possible for every single St. Lucian. Men, women, boys, girls, no matter where they are in the, in the country. So I wish you very well um, for the rest of this uh, project launch and the workshop. I know it takes a lot of effort. People are away from their desks. They're at the hotel. They're taking time out to do something that's not in their ordinary uh, workday. But the work that's going on in the room today with the able <clears throat> assistance of the CDB team I, I'm hoping that your team will take away not just the knowledge of how to execute this project in the most efficient fashion, but how to work with each other to minimize and reduce the silos that we know exist between agencies and governments. Um, and uh, this notion that it's symbiotic, it's symbiotic in, uh, on many levels, right? And I'm hoping that it's also symbiotic for all of the various agencies working in St. Lucia to get the best results. I'm hoping that you have a very quiet um, fire season. Remember, part of the fire prevention um, also has to do with building awareness in the community about, I think the minister mentioned it, uh, whether it's electric vehicles or whether it's making sure surge protectors are, are being used for, for appliances and homes to minimize those electrical sparks that can cause fires. All of that is as important as the work we're doing here today. So I wish you well with the communication strategy. Um, I hope it works. And I want to thank my colleagues for being there um, and sharing our knowledge with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Teresa Turner-Jones, for your words of wisdom. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to invite our cultural musical interlude, which will be done by our very own Charles, who will grace us with a few minutes of some melody tunes. Charles.